Hello and welcome to Inside Wyoming Football with head coach Craig Bowl. We're here in the beautiful Marion H. Rochelle Gateway Center for this show. And of course, the Cowboys last Saturday night played a late nighter in Boise, Idaho against the Boise State Broncos. And the Broncos win the game. But coach, I think in this uh, constant change for the Cowboys and just getting better, they certainly appear to have done that again. Well, if you look at the uh, point uh, total at the end, we've done that. There's work to be done, but, you know, there's no doubt. Boise is the cream of the crop. They've uh, had a great program for a long time. They were coming off a challenging loss to Utah State, and so they came into the game with a point to prove. You know, I thought our guys had a great week of practice. Uh, we needed a couple things to go our way uh, with some turnovers and uh, to create some things. That didn't happen, and Boise capitalized on them. They're a very good football team. But I thought our guys went out and really competed hard. Uh, and unlike last year, that was probably a game where I thought we didn't do that. This year we did that. And so uh, we're fighting to the very end. You bet. Cowboys had to go play on the blue turf in Boise, Idaho, right there, Albertson's Stadium in Boise, Idaho. Well, let's go. Here are the highlights. Well, here you can see uh, a neat. Uh, you know, Saturday night crowd, it was homecoming for Boise State and ESPN scores two in the game. And uh, this is a very talented young quarterback, uh, Rippon is a, a, a great guy. But here you can see some real pursuit and aggressiveness by our defense. Uh, you know, we settled down after the first drive and these are the hallmarks of having a good defense when you have a lot of guys around the football gang tackling. Here you can see DJ May and Carl Granderson really moving around. We've upgraded our speed and that's beginning to show. We do hold them to a field goal. They have an excellent field goal kicker who splits the uprights. Uh, we're down 10 to nothing early. It's certainly not how we wanted to start, but we've taken a couple punches here. What I thought was encouraging, our guys uh, continued fighting. Here they uh, come up and actually this is off a turnover, uh, a pick that a uh, quarterback Cam had thrown and went all the way down to the one, uh, gave them a touchdown. Now we're down 17 nothing. Uh, here once again you can see some great pursuit uh, by DJ May, uh, OC coming over and forcing them into a long yardage situation. Uh, there are some real bright spots here with our defense as they continue to come. Uh, now this is right before the first half. This was a very impressive drive. Uh, some good uh, running holes opened up for Brian Hill. Uh, we're managing the clock. Cam is really a, a great clock operator. Um, you can see we're down to 242. Uh, Cam does a great job of finding uh, his secondary receiver, Brian Hill, who you know, shrugs off a tackle, turns the chains over. Uh, now we're about uh, 2.30 left, uh, deep in Boise's territory, and here's a great throw and a great catch uh, by Cam to Jake Mulhar. And this really gave us a boost, and I thought it sent a message that, you know what, well, we have an opportunity to, to go out there and, and be competitive and win the second half. Unfortunately, we didn't do that. Here you can see some great highlights. Uh, by ESPN, you know, the, the ball couldn't have probably gone any place other than right where it needed to be. And good job of concentration by Jake and, and coming up with the uh, touchdown. So now we, uh, as we move on, uh, we're in the, the second half. And, uh, you know, this Mark, or uh, Brett Rippon has really got a, a great arm. I, I said Mark Rippon, that's was his father, if that name sounds familiar. And uh, they're mounting up some, some uh, long drives here, but you can see our guys continuing to, to challenge. Here's a, speaking of a challenge, here's a, an interesting uh, call where they overturned the touchdown or overturned it on a one yard line. And you can see a, this is Andrew Wingard, I believe, coming over with the tackle. Uh, Boise's guy stretches out, the ball was uh, ruled out there. And here you can see Carl Granderson. This is stuff we work on in practice with pursuit. Carl knows he's not going to be able to uh, recover it. He tips the ball back in bounds, and I believe this is Robert Priester coming up, being very opportunistic and, and uh, really turning the field over there. Now this is uh, later in the game. I think Nick Smith is in. Uh, here's a uh, jet sweep. To, I believe this is Nico Evans. Good job of blocking on the perimeter. It's good to get Nico integrated into the game. A nice long game. and. Uh, you know, we had a chance to move the ball here some. Here Nick comes back, he's got a flare pass to Brian Hill. Brian does a good job making the first guy miss and picking up some extra yardage. The thing you can always know about Brian is how competitive he is, there's no doubt about it. And uh, <clears throat> now we're coming into the fourth quarter. Uh, Nick once again coming out on the bootleg. Nick's a, 
you know, about a 6'5", 230-pound guy, you cringe a little bit when you see him take off and run, but you got to realize he almost looks like a linebacker as you're running down the field. And here you can see another uh, sweep to Brian Hill, good uh, blocking on the outside. Uh, Brian's uh, deep down in their territory. What's encouraging here is while the game's probably out of reach, our guys are really competitive. Uh, they're, they're challenging. Here's a, a bootleg that's a run pass off of, uh, option from Nick, and he comes up with a touchdown. That gives us 14 points, uh, 34 to 14, and that's going to be uh, the final score of the game. But here you can see Nick. He's got good mobility, uh, finds his way, and, and uh, gets across the goal line there for a touchdown. And, you know, uh, and Nick's, Nick's really came into our years, our third string quarterback, and has played quite a few significant reps for a, a third string quarterback. Final reps, uh, the final uh, stats, not what we want here. You can see a, an awful lot of yardage by Boise, but, uh, you know, uh, doable. Uh, what we needed to do is uh, pick up some more points to have a chance to win. Well, as you said, Coach, such an improvement from last year's game against Boise State uh, against a very good football team. But a, a few things here. Number number one, uh, we talked a little bit about how the pursuit angles, and we're seeing great pursuit from the yeah. Cowboy defense. DJ May had 14 tackles in this game. A lot of those young players really came and, and showed up in this Boise State game, I thought. Well, when you get on that kind of stage, you always are curious how these guys are going to respond because there's no doubt Boise's a nationally uh, recognized team, and to go into their place, I think they've only lost four games, and to be able to compete, that's good. Now, we don't have rose-colored glasses. we got to, we got to continue to make improvement, but the fight and the ability is there. The experience is not, and that's what we have Coach on our shirt for. How about Brian Hill, mm -hmm. the fastest ever to 1,000 yards for a Cowboy running back in Cowboy history. Uh, he just continues to amaze. Well, he's certainly a competitive guy. He's a big, strong guy that's got good ability. And our offensive line has done a good job uh, creating some holes. So that combination's been good. It's great to see Brian go over 1,000 yards. Yeah, and Nick Smith came in, as, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, late in the game. And I thought he played very, very well, got his first touchdown. You know, it's always difficult when you're the third string quarterback, how many reps you get during fall camp. And uh, he's had an opportunity now to play in two games. Those are invaluable. Uh, I know it was a challenging time for him, but I thought he handled the situation very well. He really did. Well, stay with us. We have more to come on Inside Wyoming Football with head coach Craig Bull. We're back right after this timeout. Inside Wyoming Football with Craig Bull is brought to you by your Magnificent Seven Wyoming Toyota dealers, Wyoming Relay, the University of Wyoming International Programs Office, and the University of Wyoming Outreach School. Well, he burst onto the scene last year as a freshman. Now in his sophomore year, Brian Hill, he's setting all kinds of records. He is the fastest cowboy to 1,000 yards rushing, and he's just getting started. Just an outstanding player. Let's get to know number eight, Brian Hill. Smith turns, gives it to Hill, works the middle. He's got some room to the 40. He's to midfield. Hill to the 40. He's to the 30. Hill to the 20. He's to the 10. He is in. Touchdown, Cowboys! I mean, he understands the game, and uh, you know we would we would talk about something from a defensive perspective, and uh, or you know conversely, an offensive perspective, installing a concept. But uh, and, and he just kind of picked it up, and, and, and could relate it to different things that maybe he had done, or it just made sense to him. And you know, I, and you combine that with, with a work ethic uh, that he has. I mean, he's he's one of the hardest working guys, if not the hardest, on this football team. You combine it with uh, being extremely coachable, uh, but then also with, with some talent, uh, you, you got a chance to be successful. And uh, so it, it's maybe a little bit surprising, but not it's not immensely surprising that he's having this kind of success that he is. It's partly, you know, seeing the open hole, but you also have to know like the blocking assignments of your O-line. Like if it's zone, you gotta know where, like zone is just, look to see where the grass is, run to the grass with gap blocking. You know, you got to know that you have a puller somewhere. You got to wait for him, be patient to come around and clear out his, um, clear out the hole for you. So you, it's different plays. We were on both. So it's just knowing the game and both instinct. The biggest thing that I, I really like about Brian is that he, he really, really lives in the here and now. Um, 
he, he kind of just attacks each day and you know takes it as it comes and and I know that he wants to be the best that he can possibly be and uh, you know it's very evident by the way he practices and uh, the passion in which he exhibits but also the fun that he has and uh, so I, I don't I don't know if at his young age he's putting in maybe some things into context uh, you know probably historically here um, I know he's really focused on each week and uh, he does a great job of doing that you got to want to turn a four-yard game into a 20-yard game, 20-yard game to a 40-yard game. And you just got to feel that way. If you got 10 yards, you should think, dang, I should have got 20. You got 20, you should think, I should have got 40. You got 40, you're supposed to think, dang, I should have got the touchdown. So, you know, you just got to keep wanting to be better and, you know, keep fighting for everything because, you know, you touch the ball so many times a game, some 20, some 30, but... Like I said, it's hard to stay healthy as a running back going over a thousand yards. You got to be durable, so you don't know when you're not going to be able to carry the ball. You got to carry it like it's your last time. I mean, he's a, he's a special football player. Has the potential to be really special. Uh, you know, he uh, he can do some things that uh, you know not everybody can do. And uh, you know, he's got a rare combination of size and speed. Uh, he's got an edge to himself, which is very evident when people watch him run. Uh, but then also you combine that with, with his work ethic, uh, the way he practices, it, it, he is, he's, he's different. And uh, uh, let's just hope that we can uh, continue to recruit more guys like that. Well, he has become such an outstanding back, yep. hasn't he coached at such a uh, quick, uh, young age? And, and uh, I know a, a big part of it is what happens up front, but he doesn't need much. What makes Brian Hill such an effective back? You know, he's a very competitive guy, and he's got the combination of size, strength, and speed, and movement. And he sees the field well. He's, uh, he's a guy, you know, he from East St. Louis, and we're really pleased to have him. I know first time he came up here, he hopped on a snowmobile uh, during his recruiting trip and has really fallen in love with the uh, University of Wyoming. A lot of bright days ahead for him. He's a joy to coach out there in practice, and uh, he's really going to be one of the uh, premier backs across the country. Yeah, and so much fun to watch. Number eight, Brian Hill. We have more to come on Inside Wyoming Football with head coach Craig Bowl. Stay with us. We're back after this. He was an honorable mention all-conference player just a year ago as a sophomore. Now in his junior year, he is anchoring the Cowboy offensive line and doing quite well, I might add. Outstanding student, majoring in mechanical engineering at the University of Wyoming. Our own Kevin McKinney had a chance to sit down and visit with Chase Roulier. Have you ever wanted to carry the ball and score a touchdown? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a dream to score touchdowns as an offensive lineman. So, so you live vicariously through the running backs, especially mm -hmm. a guy like Hill. Uh, is it just a heck of a deal to block for a guy like that? Yes, obviously. Um, when you have a, a great guy like Brian behind you, it, it's it's very fun to watch because. Um, you're not necessarily watching as an O-lineman, you're blocking people, but when you, when you see Brian running down the field for a, for a touchdown, it's obviously very exciting um, and rewarding as well as an offensive lineman because you know that you had a big part in uh, allowing Brian to do what he's doing. So, you know, We've talked about it before, but um, you and Cummings have become quite a pair, but the whole group is uh, very close-knit in the offensive line world. Yes. Um, obviously, we have a lot of guys out there on the field at once, so um, you really do need to be very close. Um, our lockers are all together in the locker room, so we're, a lot of times we're down there joking with each other, and uh, we, get, we get pretty close, um, even though there's a big age difference between all of us right now. Agree or disagree? Offensive linemen are the smartest guys on the team. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would. Uh, you are one of them, and, and uh, a mechanical engineer, that's, that's spectacular. What uh, would you like to do with your degree? What, uh, what do you think you might be doing with engineering? I haven't looked too far into what exactly I want to do. Um, I'm just going to kind of have to weigh my options once that time comes. Um, football sometimes makes it harder to get internships and things like that, so I haven't had a lot of chance to get um, a lot of outside experience to see exactly what it is I want to do. 
Um, so I kind of have to start there and, uh, and see exactly what I would want to do when that time comes. Uh, it's been a, 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 an up and down year, obviously, uh, for, for the Cowboys, mm -hmm. but I, can you see them getting better? Yes, um, every single day, every game, you, you see everyone getting uh, much better, especially the young guys. Those young guys just have a very uphill trajectory um, when it comes to how, how much they're getting better. The older guys, maybe not so much, just obviously everyone's getting better, but those young guys have a lot of, um, a lot of ways that they can improve and it's really shown um, throughout practice and games and things. This could be a generality, but offensive linemen are usually fairly quiet guys, aren't mm -hmm. they? Are there is there a certain personality makeup for an offensive lineman? Do you think? Yeah, I think that that quietness as an offensive lineman kind of has to come from being a bit humble. Um, you need to be pretty humble as an offensive lineman because you're usually out there doing lots of work, and you don't usually get very much credit for it as an offensive lineman. Um, Usually, some people recognize that when Brian's out there getting a thousand yards rushing, um, that the offensive line has a lot to do with that. But um, from a lot of people's perspective, that's just all Brian, and they don't really, they don't really see that the O line's behind that as well. So being humble is very important as a as an offensive lineman, and that kind of goes hand in hand with being quiet sometimes. So I know Brian would say that the offensive line is important. Yes, he would. You have a good relationship with the running backs? Yes, we do. Um, I'd say that those guys are always just in there encouraging us, um, Brian and Sean. Sean's been out for a while, obviously, but um, Brian's definitely been in there the last few weeks encouraging us um, on the sidelines during games. If uh, something went wrong with O-line, he's over there trying to get us going, um, which is very appreciative. We're very appreciative of that. So. Well, those people movers up front are so important, Coach, for the how an offense runs, and Chase Rulier has been anchoring that line and teaching a lot to those young players. He's an outstanding player. Well, he certainly is. He's a great young man, and uh, any time you're selected as a captain, particularly as a junior, uh, that's probably the highest honor you can uh, achieve, and for him to uh, go out there each day and work hard, he's really bringing that offensive line together. There are five guys that need to play in unison. Uh, he's a very intelligent player, majors in mechanical engineering, and that's a hard double. Uh, and the encouraging thing is, is uh, he's gotten better each week, not only his pass protection, but also his run blocking. Well, he really has. Well, stay with us. We have more to come on Inside Wyoming Football with head coach Craig Bowl. We're back after this. Inside Wyoming Football with Craig Bowl is brought to you by your Magnificent 7 Wyoming Toyota dealers, Wyoming Relay, the University of Wyoming International Programs Office and the University of Wyoming Outreach School. Next up for the Wyoming Cowboys, a Friday night affair in Logan, Utah against Utah State. We're going to get the scout on the Aggies from Cowboy Wide Receivers Coach, the Director of Recruiting for the University of Wyoming Cowboys, Gordy Haug. You know, watching over that, that uh, San Diego State game, um, you know, obviously try and do what we do uh, and be in maybe a little bit more heavier personnel and things like that. But, uh, you know, we still have um, a very multiple offense and what we're trying to do. So we feel pretty comfortable of, uh, you know, being able to get some run game established and, uh, you know, be able to work some pass off of that as well. They're big. That's one thing that you notice on tape. You have a lot of big guys that are uh, pretty athletic. Uh, you know, good tacklers, you know, very, very sound defense in that, in the aspect of running the football, tackling, and uh, t making turnovers. I mean, that's one thing that you flip the tape on, you see them, you know, hocking to the ball, stripping the ball, interceptions, fumbles, um, you know, all kinds of different things. So that's something that we'll have to um, concentrate on this week. They'll bring a little bit more pressure. Um, you know, we like to call it kind of like Star Wars. Uh, they're coming from all different directions and things like that, and they mask some things and play different coverage around it. So I'd say, um, you know, they're not dropping as many into coverage as Boise is. They're actually bringing a lot more people. So um, being able to protect and, and get the ball out quick is going to be key. Well, here's another very difficult opponent 
On the road, Cowboys will be in Logan, Utah to take on the Utah State Aggies. It's a Friday night affair, another late nighter, Coach, but uh, that doesn't really matter. These uh, Utah State Aggies, pretty good bunch. What are well, some of the keys well, to the game? Well, think? they certainly are a good, uh, good football team. You know, the, the thing that's going to be important for us is to shut down their perimeter run game. Uh, they've got a lot of, lot of speed. They do a lot of jet sweeps and things of that nature. So we need to make sure everybody's in the right spot. Uh, not to give up the big passing plays. Another challenge for us is going to be to, to move their defensive front. Uh, they're a strong, physical defensive football team. They soundly defeated Boise State at home. Huge win, and then they came up short against San Diego State. So the Mountain Division really is a tough, tough division in our, in our, our conference right now. And, you know, a great opportunity to go on the, on the road uh, Friday night ESPN again. I know our players are excited about it. Yeah, Utah State, another very good defensive team. Uh, it seems and uh, on the other side of the football, kind of hit and miss, but that defensive side, like Boise State, very solid. Well, there's no doubt. Anytime you play great defense, and that's where we want to be headed, you have a chance to, to uh, maintain and create momentum, and Utah State certainly does that. You bet. 8-15 to kick off for the Cowboys and the Utah State Aggies from Logan, Utah. And remember, it's a Friday night game right there in Logan. That's going to do it for us here on Inside Wyoming Football with head coach Craig Bull. For the head coach, I'm Dave Walsh. So long, everybody. Third and goal from the six. He'll turn, fake the gift. Smith rolling right. He's going to keep it. He goes in. Touchdown, Cowboys. Field, he'll fake it to him, but Cam wants to throw. <laughs> this is caught. Touchdown, Cowboys. Jake Mallhart with the catch.